name is Linda Carter. I am going to be your instructor for the next hour and a half. It's my pleasure to talk with you today. I come from industry. I've been in clinical research now a little over 10 years. I started out as a study coordinator for investigator-initiated trials. And from there, I worked as a CRA in a CRO company. I worked as a CRA in pharmaceutical and a vaccines company. I've also worked as a trial manager and project manager for very large phase two and phase three clinical trials. And most recently, I've come to Barnett February of this year. So I'm pretty fresh from industry, and I'm very happy to provide for you what I know, and I encourage you to ask me questions or stop me if there's anything that's unclear. We're going to be talking about a very hot topic these days. You hear it everywhere. everywhere. It's, uh, it's really quite a buzzword in the industry, risk-based monitoring. A lot of people are talking about it. It's actually been under discussion for many years now, but it has been very slow to be adopted, in part because there's some fear out there, fear of the unknown. Some sites don't quite know how to work with it. Sponsors are a little fearful of it. They're not quite sure how to handle it. And slowly but surely, we're starting to wade into this field. And so I hope you'll find this topic interesting and informative. There are certainly more in-depth trainings that you can go into that talk about risk-based monitoring and talk about quality management and quality by design, all of which are part of this process. And I encourage you to keep moving forward with this process because I think it is definitely here to stay and we're going we're gonna to see more and more of it. So by the end of the course today, you should be able to describe the concepts and the activities of a risk-based monitoring approach should be able to investigate the regulatory and industry rationales for risk-based monitoring, identify expected changes for sites as a result of risk-based monitoring, and formulate some kind of a transition plan at your clinical site to succeed in a risk-based monitoring world. This information on this screen comes from the FDA guidance on risk-based monitoring, and we're going to talk about this guidance document a little more in detail in a few minutes. But for now, I think it's important that we understand why we're seeing changes in the industry and how this is going to impact the expectations for clinical sites. So current um, practices that are used by sponsors to manage studies are a wide range of monitoring practices. They can be periodic. They can be frequent with 100% source data verification by CRAs. But for the most part, that process is really considered reactive, and it's premised on retrospective detection of errors. Oversight efforts are really not commensurate with risks, and it may not optimally address the significant risks to trial integrity, particularly systematic error and not the least of which, it's very resource intensive. I know from my experience, I'm pretty much accustomed to doing 100% source documentation for 100% of the subjects. It's pretty much the model, the foundation from which I was built on, and it wasn't until uh, the last couple of years working in clinical trials did we start to dip our big toe into looking at monitoring in a risk-based approach. So it's very interesting. There are a lot of components to it. So why sponsors are conducting studies based on risk management approach? Well, there's an increased protection of rights, safety, and welfare of trial subjects by focusing on the most critical data points. And that can be sometimes a little difficult and challenging for sites to tease apart. We want to be able to ensure the data integrity by reviewing the data sooner as it's entered into the electronic system. This is an important point because it means that there's going to be more pressure and expectations for clinical sites to be able to enter the data quickly after each subject visit. If the sponsors and the CROs are looking at the data in what we call real time and remotely, they're going to need to have access to it to assess it for trends or for issues. So there's an increase here on quality. Quality risk management in that regard is never the result of an accident. So, you know, so that we're all on the same page and we're all having the same terminology, let's talk a little bit about what it means when we say risk. So, you know, you might think this is obvious, but sometimes it's not. So a risk defined by Merriam-Webster is the possibility of loss or injury or someone or something that creates or suggests a hazard. It's synonymous with something that's hazardous or a peril, a pitfall, some threat or some potential trouble. So it's important that you keep those, those terms in mind when we think about risk 
And we're, later on, we're going to talk about how big of a risk is it, and that will determine how we prioritize how we're going to address those potential risks.